midnight long weekend after weekend. So what's wrong with this picture, Sam? Well, Diane, what's wrong is that many of these carousers are teenagers, some of them still in high school, who found a way to thwart the law in this country. They're too young to drink here, but they've discovered an oasis right on America's doorstep. Jay Shadler followed the young throng to cross the border, looking for a night of fun, often finding something much more dangerous. It is a nightly scene without equal. Guys getting drunk, the women getting drunk. Mardi Gras without length. I come back drunk, but I don't go back high. New Year's Eve without dawn. I go down to Tijuana because I ain't get my drink on. This is Tijuana's Avenue de Revolution. Eight blocks, 30 bars, and 10,000 young people make it perhaps the most alcohol and hormone-drenched street in the world. I come here every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. What about your folks? Do they know you're down here? Oh, uh, they know I come down here. Tasha, like many of these revelers, lives in neighboring San Diego, just a few miles but a cultural chasm away. There's a 10 p.m. curfew here for anyone under 18. In Tijuana, the action is just beginning at midnight. In San Diego, as elsewhere in the U.S., the drinking age is 21. Just across the border, it's 18. And so they come, like lemmings, to liquor. For example, on a typical Wednesday night, they call it Cheap Drink Wednesday around here, an estimated 9,000 people will cross this border. Of that number, roughly 1,500 will come back legally drunk. And many of those will be intoxicated at levels two, even three times the legal limit. Two for one drink specials all night long. So bring a friend, bring your dance. Using radio ads, local bars relentlessly encourage the young to drink. They also market the mayhem by posting flyers at area high schools and even mailing birthday cards to targeted teens. That's quite yeah. a statement right there, isn't it? Congratulations, yeah. you're old enough to drink. Right. That's, you know, as, as though that is the mature thing to do. Anna Colbian works for the San Diego-based Institute for Health Advocacy. And two lines down, all-you-can-drink party all night long for only $2.99 for ladies. And sometimes free. Our invitation wasn't nearly so direct, but we came anyway. Over two weekends, using a combination of hidden and conventional cameras, we recorded a perpetual cocktail of risky behavior. Mixing heavy drinking, provocative dress, and naive youth. This, for instance, is Tijuana's specialty. It's known as a popper and costs around two bucks. The man with the whistle flips an unsuspecting patron's head back and pours and pours and pours down the tequila. It's non-stop and 80 proof. Over a minute later, it's chased by a mouthful of beer, and if all of that still isn't enough, there's a final shake and pop to the head. According to our estimate, this 19-year-old has just consumed nearly a half bottle of tequila, equal to seven or eight drinks. In this liquid atmosphere, serious trouble can be just a moment away, especially when the club culture rewards sexual behavior. All the girls get naked for money. Yeah, under bucks. If you show your, if you show your bow the G-string, you and get a hundred bucks. Test, you get a Always. Now that could obviously, I mean, that can be dangerous for yeah, young girls. Yeah, but they're girls. 18 and it's, there's nothing There's legal on it. We don't, we don't do that. Because me and my daddy partner. During the several nights we spent here, the nightly caravan to Tijuana included this busload of teens. At the wheel is 54-year-old Martha Arcilla, who for 10 bucks runs a shuttle to and from the border. We caught up with Martha earlier in the day. If you didn't do this, they would drive They'd be driving. They'd be driving. So it's either I take them, take them safely, get them home safely, or they drive. They have an accident on the way on the way home. But the police worry she's just feeding the frenzy. Just the people have to have a control in there. <laughs> Chill out. They'll kick you off the bus. You get fights, sex, throw up, anything and everything on board the buses. And if she doesn't like it, if it's too much. 
she'll pull over and kick him off. Thank you, ma'am. Of course, even the police admit that whatever goes on in Martha's bus pales next to the general chaos on the streets. In fact, law enforcement on both sides of the border are now dealing with a widening range of trouble, from gang violence to drugs and public drunkenness. Just last year, San Diego police set up this makeshift station at the border as a detention and detox center. On a typical weekend, this trailer is full. You are drunk. Right. And you are in public. Right. Stop in right there. I walked across the border. Well, you were helped across the border. Back outside, more revelers are questioned. Are you drunk? Can you drunk. take care of yourself? Where I you parked at? Hello, I'm, I'm well, talking to you. Doesn't mean you have to we, get up on me. I'll suggest if you take her right now to the car and okay. have her sit down. If I see her over here bouncing off the walls, I'm going to arrest her drunk in public. As this nightly border spectacle continues, this man is found passed out on the street with no ID and head injuries. On most nights, this tide of teens reaches a peak around 3 a.m returning from the Tijuana bars and crossing or staggering into the states. Among the thousands who shuffle back, the lucky ones have designated drivers. The less fortunate sometimes return in ambulances. I've watched the teenagers stream back across, and it's almost like the walking wounded coming back from a battlefield. And they come staggering back across, being carried back across by their friends drunk, unconscious. Dr. Michael Seiss is medical director at Scripps Mercy Hospital, Division of Trauma. On a busy weekend night, we see a significant number of teenagers who've been injured in automobile accidents. Right. Another significant number who've been assaulted, some who've been shot and stabbed. Breaking the pattern of these mad nights will not be easy. But a glimmer of change came late last year when a coalition of law enforcement, health groups, and parents began a counterattack on this borderline behavior. You guys might want to read some of this. Operation Safe Crossing employs both carrots and sticks. Free advice. If you're under 21, when you come back into the United States, you can still be arrested for being under the influence. And very tough enforcement. If you're going to arrest if you're wearing a false ID. You're tough on the kids who you do arrest, unquestionably. But can you scare these teenagers out of this behavior? It all depends on the teenager. They've never, probably most of them have never had a ticket before. Now all of a sudden they're with a thousand people. Everybody's looking at them. They're handcuffed. They're thrown in the back of a police car. They're driven to our, our detention area. Reports are written. Yeah. Other policemen are in and out of there. It's pretty traumatic. That's it, part it, of your plan, actually, isn't it? It is. Uh, and if they don't come down again because they were scared or embarrassed or humiliated, right. well, not only is it one less problem for us to deal with, but maybe it's 10 of their friends that decide not to come down. Still, the night seduces more than it frightens. Just a few hours before dawn, we watch these students turn their backs on Martha's shuttle. What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? The young, forever immortal in their own minds, will tempt the dangers again, at least until dawn or tragedy forces them to wake up. This weekend is the beginning of spring break, and police say they expect record crowds to be crossing the border into Tijuana, including thousands of young people who should know that when they come back across, a greatly increased number of police officers will be waiting on the U.S. side. Later, 